Hi guys, I'm kind of sick, so bear with me here. <laughs> um, this is a comedy act I did for my junior year of high school, so I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Isabella Gomez. My full name actually used to be Ricardo Gomez Hernandez Jr. Beautiful name for a girl, right? <laughs> Can you imagine how awkward it must be for my parents to introduce me to people who don't even know me yet? You know, you'll, you'll, um, they'll be like, these are my three daughters, Yuleni Gomez, Zahandi Gomez, and Ricardo Gomez Hernandez Jr. <laughs> well, at least I'll have something interesting to talk about. But enough about that. I wasn't here to talk about my name. I was actually here to talk about my voice because I have this deep voice. And I really don't know how to explain it, but my voice seems to change levels at random times. And I don't know why, <laughs> but it does happen. Can someone explain to me why I have this voice? You, sir, with the head. Can you explain it to me? Can you? <laughs> well, I can. I'm transgender. I'm gonna let y'all soak that in for a second. Soak it in. I know, I'm sorry, fellas. I know how devastating it must be to find out that a girl really wasn't born a girl. You could stop fantasizing now. Um, <laughs> You know, a lot of people always ask me, how did I find out when I was trans, or when did I find out when I wasn't part of the male species? I simply wish by telling them, right mind, wrong body, deal with it. But for people who don't really experience the whole trans process and everything, I simply go back by telling them back when I was eight years old. Um, my dad was a huge sports fanatic, and still is, um, so he encouraged me to play sports and soccer. Um, so during my tournament, you will see, like, my team, you know, all the boys are very big and tough, you know, you have one yelling, yeah, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. Then you have the other one yelling, yeah, defense, defense, defense. Then you have me, a scrawny little feminine boy yelling, go team, go. <laughs> yeah, it, it really wasn't that obvious. <laughs> so, you know, the coach told me to actually start playing in the field, so I actually started playing, and I steal the ball for the first time, so it was very exciting. And then you have my family yelling, yeah, you can do it, you can do it. And so I was all running, and... I'm going towards the goal. But then I stop. And I see the prettiest silly I've ever seen in my whole life. And then I sit down and start playing with it. And then the other team scores the goal and people blame me for losing the game. Blame the lily. It was too pretty. And it looked good in my hair. Hello, holla. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I never really wanted to be a soccer player. I've always wanted to be a cheerleader. Um, you know, I was a cheerleader my freshman year of high school. But then I moved back to Sacramento. I, I was in LA for my freshman year of high school. Then I moved back here um, for my sophomore year and I attended a school called Intercom High School. I don't know if any of you know the school. Yeah. Um, but this time I was still, you know, a boy looking, you know, a little bit more feminine though. Had my skinny jeans, you know, my longer hair and I was dangerous, you know, for the fellas out there. And then, um, you know, I started every passing period, I would actually go to um, the the restroom to fix my hair. It was always it was always a thing for me, like during my passing period. So I would go, and there wouldn't be one guy who wouldn't just walk in, do their business. So no, they had to look at me for five and straight ten or five minutes just to figure out what I was, or if I'm some kind of weird person in the zoo, or just some kind of mystical creature or something. Um, but my favorite guy was the ghetto guy. You know the guy that has you know the their pants down to their thighs, and you know who walks like. The ghetto guy walks in, and then he stops, and he looks at me, and then says, Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yo, Laquan, come check this real quick. Then Laquan comes. <laughs> then he looks at me, and then he goes, Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. Yo, Devon, come over here. Then you have Devon doing the same thing, you know, shutting his stuff. He comes in, and then these other 20 guys come in the bathroom. So this is when I actually go into my bag and start fixing my hair, because you never know if you're going to meet your boo thing or your future hubby. So no, but then you have 50 other guys in the, um, in the bathroom. So this is when I'm like, okay, this is enough. I turn around, then I go, sirs, I got one thing to say to all of you. 
right mind, wrong body, deal with it. And then they start running out towards the door. And then you have another guy who has unfinished business in the bathroom with his, you know, jeans all the way down to his thighs and runs out the bathroom. And then it's just me, myself, and I in the mirror with my bag and everything's all cool again. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people tell me, um, you know, I'm very, you know, say that I'm very inspirational or very strong with what I had to go through. Um, but I don't really think this requires strength. I think it just requires you knowing who you are. Because I can't just go up to AJ and be like, yo, AJ, you're Asian. I don't care what you say, but you're Asian. Okay, not only is AJ going to turn around and be all like, oh, hell no. Nah, but she's also going to not sit down and cry because she knows who she is. She's a Jew. <laughs> Or whatever she is, but she still is something. So she knows what she is. Um, you know, I actually watched the news like two years ago, and I saw um, this, uh, I guess this pregnant woman was going to give labor during a huge snowstorm. So during the whole ride to the, to the hospital, she was, um, she was suffering, going through this whole pain. Can you imagine how hard it must be for the husband and the wife? You know, the wife <sighs> trying to breathe. Then you have the husband, you know, driving. And then the wife going, hurry up. And then the husband going, hold on, I'm going. And the wife going, hurry up. I would feel so bad for the husband right now because you never <laughs> want to deal with a pregnant woman while in labor. But she actually goes to the hospital and they make it there on time. And she ends up naming her kid Jack Frost. And I thought it was really clever. So then I was thinking if I was pregnant, you know, and if I had you know, um, my boyfriend working construction working and, you know, I have my, my baby there, I would name my baby Bob the Builder. Or if I was in a forest or something, we're having a picnic and have my baby there, I will name my baby Dora the Exploradora. You know what I mean? So I think that would be a really clever way. And it beats an hour trying to decide for a name. So I thought it was really clever. Um, but now that I'm talking to you guys about this, I really came to terms with myself and maybe I'm not right mind, wrong body. Maybe I'm a right mind, right body. This is who I am. And if in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when I'm finally the woman that I was meant to be, and if when people find, don't know that I'm trans, but then somehow find out that I'm trans, um, and go out, oh hell no about it, I'll simply say, ma'ams and sirs, this is who I was all along. You were just too blind to see it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.